Matthew, thank you for coming on the podcast. I actually, 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago, I did uh, the uh, the coffee enema. So that was nice. Good experiment. Good experiment. Nice. So yeah. Started the podcast off right. Um, have you tried yours yet? <laughs> no, I've got the, the uh, enema bag supposed to arrive today. Nice. So, um, yeah. So I'm like the coffee thing. I probably shouldn't yeah. shove a bunch of coffee up my butt at night. I think I'll wait. Yeah. In the morning to do that yeah. yeah i've done them a bunch before uh, okay yeah of course but uh it's very interesting you can definitely tell it cleans you out you do get a bit of energetic awakeness i would say yeah it's like kind of like a strange one like coffee when you drink it it's like font forward almost you're like oh cool i got energy i'll go do whatever yeah. when you inject it i guess you could say <laughs> um it's more of like just this underlying like Hey, there's coffee somewhere inside of me. I know it's doing something, or at least the caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's super, uh, super strange, but yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I never done it before. I'm, I'm curious about the whole thing. My girlfriend's <laughs> like, "Yeah, I got to shove something up your butt. All yeah. right, I'm like, oh, all right, here we go." <laughs> yeah, it's a experience that everyone should have, but yeah. so that's a great way to start everything. Um, normally, I ask, "What, what's your favorite superhero?" Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Um, right now, in this moment, I would say Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Now, why is that? Because he's the master of the mystical arts. Yeah, and, hell yeah. And that's like, my most of my life has been geared towards mysticism. So, so when I got, when I found Doctor Strange, I was like, yes, this oh, yeah. guy. This oh, guy. Yeah. I remember watching the movie and I was like, God damn it, they did it. They made a character who's like, actually like has everything you have your model be done i have some yeah. model be done right here too uh, beautiful but yeah. yeah but dude i was like this guy is awesome so okay so the mystical arts how does this relate back to the transcendence of you and you to now where where did that journey begin how did it start what uh what does that look like the mystical art stuff um well, 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 yeah. from Dr. Sure. So just yeah yeah into your journey Okay, cool. That's great. It's, it's a fun direction to go. Um, uh, so I have a really distinct memory of being, I don't know, somewhere in like the seven to nine years old range, sitting at the dinner table with my parents. And I was just like, okay. So I grew up in Cleveland. I was like, yeah. okay, we're in Cleveland, which is in Ohio, which is in America, which is on Earth, which is in the Milky Way galaxy. But where is that? <laughs> and, and my mom was like oh this is a fun question it's like okay well you know we're in the universe kind of here and my dad's like don't ask questions like this it's <laughs> just gonna make you crazy you know it was like hmm I think being crazy might be fun oh yeah so that yeah so I kind of like from a young age I kind of always was geared in that direction like always pointed towards mystery and wondering what is going on more than anything else um, and then when I was in seventh grade, I was in seventh grade, I flipped over my handlebars on my bike and I broke my hand and sprained my wrist and like couldn't do anything on my own for a while. Yeah. And so my mom was basically like there for me all the time. And we just got to spend a lot of time together and rapping about different things and shared a lot about her growing up. And she was really deep into new age kind of stuff. You know, like I always, I was always wrapped in crystals going to school growing up and she'd be like, I have to go spin my colors if she like gets overwhelmed. I'm like, what do you mean spin your colors? She was, so she was always meditating and like doing chakra alignments and things like that. And oh, really? this is when I was like, finally like 11 or 12. And she was like, this is what I've been doing. She kind of explained it all to me. I was like, this is so cool. And uh, she gave me a couple of books. She gave me Dan Millman's Way of the Peaceful Warrior mm -hmm. and Brian Weiss's Many Lives, Many Masters. And she was like, go read these books. And let's talk about it. And so that set me off and kind of just like kept going and getting deeper and deeper and deeper from there. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's fun. Like everybody has like these different, uh, different ways that they breach the spiritual, the, I guess, external thinking. Right. And it's, but it's so important. If you lack that, then it's like, you're just a cold stone brick. 
just like goes about life like a 1984 character yeah yeah it's it's so frigid i mean the, the and rigid there's just nothing to it like yeah my, some of my favorite conversations are with atheists so yeah like, like do you have any fun in your life yeah. like, well, <laughs> like do you know? i know that's the thing though but it's like an atheist is like almost no atheist is a real atheist like if you like threaten them or like put them in a really dire situation they're like please get me out of here yeah. something help me yeah and most of them i find too they're all like they just have rejected the judeo-christian beliefs of what god is and they have their own kind of spirituality but they yeah. call themselves an atheist and it's like okay that's cool yeah i like that the term spiritual is becoming more popular yeah like almost to the point where it's cliche now yeah so like, like, okay right. let's find something else like, that like, guy's we'll, fucking we'll spiritual <laughs> yeah right that's just like scientist that right guy he's a science guy yeah uh, well, so, yeah, okay. I lived in the Bay Area for a long time, and so oh. spiritual people became a little bit annoying. Yeah. So, it's, well, when it becomes your identity or who you are, I'm spiritual, right. then that's when it takes you over. So, but that kind of leads into I wanted to go through your story because when you wrote it out, um, for reference, we're in a uh, Slack channel together, and in the Slack channel, Matthew was talking about who he is, how he start, got started and everything in his life. And I was like, this guy has such an awesome story that I wanted to bring it on the podcast and chit chat because also we vibe for, based on reading what you had going, I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna vibe easily. Um, but I wanted to dive into like the actual like story of who you were and who you are now and how you got there. Okay. Um, okay. Where, 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 and what, and how we can, do you want to we, dive into this? We can, we can, maybe let's begin in Ohio State if you're comfortable with that. Back then, okay, um, sure. So I, I was young. I started school early, um, and so I, I was 17 when I went to college. Mm -hmm. Didn't turn 18 until the middle of my freshman year. So I was a little bit young. And probably should have taken a gap year if that was that wasn't a thing. It was yeah. it was 1997. Like gap year wasn't a thing. It was like you go to college. That's what you do, or you go and go to a trade school. Which, totally. Um, so I went to school and I lived. My roommate was one of my good friends from high school, and and like right away he was like all right we're gonna run this shit on south campus i met this dude who has the weed hook up it's like cool and so started started selling weed out of the dorm room and wow. it became like bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where we always had like 20 30 people cramped in our little tiny room taking four foot bong rips and like it, it was just it was a scene it was a scene yeah. like we and um it got a little crazy and then started really playing with lsd and then we realized that we could buy you know dozens and dozens of sheets of acid at a time and we could mark the prices up really huge on that so it's like cool we should be selling acid and so we're selling acid and taking a lot of acid and smoking weed from morning till night and it got it got pretty crazy. It got out of hand to the point where we'd go to parties and be hanging out at parties and start hearing people be like, "Oh, did you hear Matt and Adam got this?" And then it was like, "Oh my God!" But we're standing next to people, hearing them yeah. talk about us. They have no idea who we are. Like this is out of hand. Um, and then <laughs> we had one of our engineer friends hook up a thing in our window so that it was we had like massive suction with the fan, so it was like. We, we had to like yeah. push hard to get the door to close. So you would never smell it. Even though we were smoking weed oh. all the time, we lived across the hall from the RA, never ever smell weed. It was amazing. And then one day the winds changed, like magically the winds all changed and all everything was going, oof, and um, got kicked out. So that's, uh, that's how that happened. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was like forced to tell my parents everything about how I'd been, totally fucking up and and that was this is what i was doing and um my grades were decent yeah i mean i was like an a and b student in high school um but some when i went to class i was good enough to be able to get by but i didn't go to class all that often so it was like 
it's pretty shitty. It was cool. not what my parents were expecting of me. Um, so, um, yeah. So from there, where did you go? What did you do? And, you know, like how did how did you start to follow the path to where you are today from that point? So, yeah, so that was definitely a super low point. And I just had to suck it up and be like, I need help, guys. Like, I, So I moved home, back home with my parents. And um, I had about a week <laughs> of just feeling sorry for myself. And then it's 6 a.m. one morning, my dad comes barreling into my room. He's like, get up, get dressed, you're getting a job. And I was just like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm like, I don't know where to go. He's like, I don't care. You go to every single establishment in this whole city and you don't, you don't come home until you have a job. Wow. And I was just like, okay. I got up and I got dressed and I went from uh, store to, to business. There's lots of like uh, industry in the suburb where my parents lived. So I went, walked into every place, filled out applications everywhere. And by the time I got home, I had a job as a front desk clerk in the days in. So, which is a really yep. weird to work <laughs> i would assume some of those like yeah. hotels especially like the ritzier ones you kind of understand who the crowd is gonna be yeah but the non ritzy ones you're always like this is gonna be yeah strange yeah. night you see like that one guy come in and you're like okay here we go yeah like the, <laughs> the old black dude in the purple suit you know with the yep. feather and the hat and everything <laughs> and he's just like how much is a room for an hour? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Okay. You're like 35 bucks. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but so yeah, so I moved home, got a job and then I started going to school at Cleveland state university and, um, got hooked up with different people. And so within that school, they had a school called first college, which was like a liberal arts, school yeah. within the greater school and it only had like 150 students in it and you could fully point whatever direction you wanted to academically really? so uh, i had a really great teacher an anthropology professor who kind of took me under his wing and a great counselor in the first college and they were like you just create whatever you want to create we'll pick out the classes that you think are going to be geared towards what you need to learn and at the end of it write a thesis and your prereqs are all out of the way from what you did at Ohio State so we're good on that and I'll just do what you want so um, I called my studying was called the human experience and so it was a mixture of cultural anthropology philosophy of religion and cultural arts wow that's awesome so like what were some of the like main exploration topics that you were diving in with that um so like ancient civilizations history of jazz uh took a class called the Tao of physics which was really cool wow that's cool um a lot of anthropology like studying like weird weird tribal ceremonies in ethiopia um um started that's when i really started diving deep into shamanism as well and that's a whole other topic but um which was kind of like running parallel at that time um yeah so that's some of the classes that's awesome and that was kind of like a catapult the freedom that you could have during that period of time was kind of a catapult to what you then would become later in life right right exactly exactly oh nice look i got my oh hell yeah, yeah a little snowball awesome yeah. <laughs> i knew i knew because like you couldn't tell at the beginning and then i was like ah there it is yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes I like use it like it's a mic that I like move around. Sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it in the same spot. But okay, so you were studying basically most of you know consciousness, the human, who we are. What what catapulted to? Because you're in Cleveland at this point. Yes. But I know that then you're in California for right. 15 years, right? Right. Yeah. So my last semester. At Cleveland State, I had a professor, Dr. James Royster, a beautiful, sweet, sweet man. And he was retired, but came back every other year to teach a class called Personal Transformation. And he got, I learned so much. Like that's when I started like getting into Carl Jung and Ken Wilbur. And um, he, he had me buy my first roomie poetry book. And like, 
he he turned me on to so many different things and i was just like this is what i want to do for the rest of my life is i want to keep studying this and he was like well you have to figure out a way to study consciousness somewhere so i just went into google i was like graduate <laughs> program studying consciousness and boom california institute of integral studies showed up and it's like okay i applied and got in that's awesome I know. I've always loved Kelly. I've always been gravitating towards it. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know if I can make the leap yet. Yeah. I'm just hesitant. I'm like, ah, uh, there's so many things I want to do. If I go to Cali, then I'm like, I know I have to like get a place and then <laughs> be there for a long time. Or I'm like, I just need to like travel around and like see a bunch of shit. And then I'll get a place. Yeah. But then once you're in Cali, everyone's like, let's go see a bunch of shit. Like, right. Like, right. And once you're there, it just kind of, I mean, it depends. It seems like you'd probably vibe with it pretty well. Some people it sort of chews up and spits out. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm going to explore stuck. Austin. Gotta explore Austin. Austin and Austin. Yeah. Yeah, Austin and Austin. It's a, it's a match made in heaven. Huh? Exactly. So, <laughs> so you're in California, now you're in Austin. Yes. For the time being. And I know you've had a couple uh, business successes. This is like a complete offshoot from like, if you looked at you in Ohio state. Yeah. Theoretically, you know, you were being an entrepreneur. So theoretically, figure it out. And yeah. It's a small room. You could say it's comparable to a garage. <laughs> um, then studying human consciousness, which the LSD I'm sure helped open the mind to that. Definitely. And then moving to California. Now, how how did you come about to get to Austin, Texas and uh, starting these businesses and everything? Okay. Um, well, those are two definitely different questions. So, I mean, I, I did, I, I had a few different businesses in the medical cannabis world um, from growing flour to running a nursery oh, yeah. in different phases in between working with like the biggest dispensary in the world at the time, which was really cool. Um, and yeah, and so, um, okay, long story short, <laughs> I get uneasy when I get too comfortable. Yeah. And so when things get really, really comfortable, even if it's like blissfully fantastic, I'm just like, ah, I want to fuck it up and see what I can change and learn something new. And so it's kind of what I did. I was like, making, I had an amazing company that was doing fantastic well. I was living on a houseboat in Sausalito. Like it was, my life was dreamy as dreamy could be and I was like nah. um, and so I sold my company met a woman moved to Ventura California opened up a men and women's clothing boutique which I know like so she was a doctor of psychology so she had her she saw her clients in the back mm. of the shop and so in the front was the shop and in the back was <laughs> where she saw our clients we called it retail therapy duh um, awesome. and she turned out to be a total fucking nightmare and just her whole world just like just uh, just crashed and took me along with it and, and and so yeah so I was in serious debt and I just had to just pull the plug I was like I can't like, this is toxic this whole experience is completely toxic and uh, um, so I left um, and I had to just dig myself out of that hole. And I spent a good chunk of time at the Esalen Institute, which yeah. go. I know. And if you're not familiar with it, it's it's where yeah. it's where the whole like human potential movement started in the '60s. So yeah. I need to go. I've been I follow them on Instagram. I know like Paul Sellers records all of his stuff there. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. I'm like uh, okay, I need to be there. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, just sitting in in these hot springs in these tubs on the edge of a cliff it's just it's unreal where it's unreal. is it real it's in big sur oh okay oh, so man. which which is like some of the most beautiful coastline in the world and it's just super high and jagged and crazy rocks just popping out of the water and i mean these tubs are actually cut into the cliffside with the hot springs rolling into it yeah, it's crazy. And there's like a little tiny bit of lithium in the hot springs. So you're super just blissed out sitting there. And 
I mean, it's the same tubs that Alan Watts and Aldous Huxley yeah. and Terrence McKenna, you know, these are the same tubs they all sat in. So wow. it's like, it's deep, deep, cool history. And yeah, yeah. beautiful, it's a more beautiful place. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, like Alan Watts is my, I love that dude. Yeah. Every, all of his ideas, I'm like, yeah, they are so good. So, yeah. Thought, and then he's kind of like a mini comedian in all of his speeches. Absolutely. And you're like, you ever listen to Chill Stop? Chill Stop? Yeah, Chill Stop is uh, Alan Watts um, intermixed with, er, well, it's like soft EDM intermixed uh-huh. with Alan Watts lectures. And when Alan Watts is about to drop knowledge, that's when the beat drops. <laughs> it's so good. Nice. I'll check that out. That's yeah, it's like perfect for like studying or if you're in like a zen out mode or anything. You're like, yeah. Because he'll just like, the music will pause. He'll say something profound and then it drops and you're like, yes, yeah, this is amazing. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's awesome. So you were at Esalen? Yeah. yeah, so I was at Esalen for a while um, and I was working in the kitchen just kind of getting back to my roots and I was doing a course in yoga and doing a course in Tai Chi also and just kind of getting back into my body and just serving food and doing fucking dishes like there's nothing like doing dishes for hundreds of people to like that really is like as roots as it possibly can get um and yeah and so finally while I was there I was just like okay this is like I, I'm coming out of this. What is what I need to be doing with myself? And it's like, all right, you've had a lot of crazy experiences and have a lot of education. Put all that good shit to use and help people. And so I started coaching and started like diving really deep into high performance, um, like really dialing in nutrition stuff and getting all my certifications in order. Um, did an apprenticeship for a few years under a Tai Chi master so I could teach Tai Chi. Um, certified yoga instructor, permaculturist, Reiki master teacher. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, oh, on it, um, on it academy certifications. Oh, hey. um, yeah. So I kind of just like got all my little letters after my name and just and started to telling people that I was a coach and oh, I could help them out, and then it worked. <laughs> That's how it works now. Yeah. So I got to Austin. So, okay. Roundabout way. So, um, I was still, I was still in the medical cannabis world. I was still growing weed to kind of supplement my income as I was growing my coaching career and just started realizing that it, the direction of the industry was going in a darker place. It wasn't, it wasn't the same kind of like camaraderie. It wasn't the same kind of I'll help you, you help me, we'll help each other. It was, it was starting to be really kind of dicey and competitive. And um, yeah, the, uh, the where the power used to lie in the cultivators, it was like a deep reverence for the growers because they everyone knew that like without them, there is no medicine. Yeah. And at some point, the the middlemen took over power all the brokers took over power and that includes the dispensaries they're like oh we actually have final say on everything it's like we can fuck over the growers if we want to and i guess Mm. that's what they wanted to do so that's what they did um so it wasn't sustainable as a industry anymore and i just didn't like how dark it was getting why am i still doing this i feel like having one foot over here is keeping me from flying in this coaching direction um, so I left and I just, I was like, I got to get out of California to do this. And my sweetie and I packed up, we moved to Cleveland for a bit and I got training on marketing and, and sales and all this stuff like that and started developing a course and learned the dark side of internet marketing and, and how like sleazy and gross that can be. And I was like, oh, that doesn't feel right either. And, um, and then my aunt and uncle had a condo in Galveston Island, Texas. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, um, if nobody's living in the condo right now. Why don't you just go and stay there as long as you want? Okay, it's about to be winter in Cleveland. It's a good time to go to Texas, yep. live on the beach. So I lived on the beach for a few months and kind of finished up my course and gotten all that going and um, to the point where we couldn't live in Galveston anymore because it's all just like beige food and mm-hmm. frog people. So we were like, well, let's, we're in Texas. Let's go to Austin. Let's see what that's about. So landed oh, yeah. in Austin. Boom. 
So, okay. So then let's dive into this course and what you got going with that, because that's awesome. That's, um, yeah, I mean, I know the, uh, the dark side of it. It's, uh, it's a very, yeah. Place. Yeah. So you're, you're, you do a little bit of marketing for companies, right? Yeah. 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 I have my own, uh, attention labs is my growth agency. So we definitely see people who want that but we don't do that we only work with companies that we actually like and believe in their mission and are like yeah. hey we're spreading a message like it's got to be a company that like we actually like i if i don't use this stuff i'm not gonna uh, get their message out there that's great yeah so that's kind of like yeah. our way of trying to combat that because i've seen like hey we just need to like push margins and right. how much can we make off of this like, can you get this in everyone's hands fidget spinners yeah yeah it's good conscious gotta gotta keep the consciousness in everything we do right yeah the more we try the better things become yeah yeah Yeah. i think so but so so what's going on with this course and you know i really i I love the whole journey and everything you got going with from tai chi to yoga to the answers all of it how does the uh the course work with someone um so it it's video based (laughs) with with kind of check-ins like weekly Q and a check-in kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, so it's a 12 week course total and with six phases of it, two weeks on each phase, eat, move, breathe, think, feel, flow. And so start with nutrition, move into fitness and then breathing techniques. Um, then some more like mindset and, and mindfuling mindfulness, I think is garbage. It's, it's, I think mindfuling is where it's at because it's a process and it's a constant evolution of awareness. And, oh yeah. Um, and then feeling like getting, like tapping into what it is with our emotions and how they move through our system. Like what is the science behind emotions? What's the difference between a thought and a feeling and a sensation and, and like a sentiment, like there's all these different nuanced things and, working through those and then flow. And finally, it's like where everything kind of wraps together and you get to be in line with the divine. Hell yeah. I love that. In line with the divine. Oh man. That rolls off the tongue. Super good. <laughs> I love it. I love like I get tied up on like words <clears throat> when yeah. they sound good sometimes. I'm like, God, oh, this is beautiful. Yeah. It's fun. Oh it's yeah. Fun. So, yeah. so this is awesome. I love your approach because it's holistic. But not in the sense of like, so a lot of people like say holistic health and that's like eating whole foods and uh, like using herbal medicine and whatever, but like holistic in the sense of like a complete um, map for how to approach improvement in life. Right. And so I look at it as like an execution of humanity. Right. So like how, how, okay. Baseline. I am alive in a body. Yeah. Somehow I can recognize I'm alive in a body. It's like, Oh wait, I'm thinking that's weird. It's like, Oh, that hurts. Oh my God. I'm happy. I'm hungry. I'm sad. That's scary. Like there's like, Whoa, all these things happening. And then, you know, whoops, I ate this and none of this exists anymore. And you're in a whole different place, but still get to experience that too. And so it's like, okay, that, how do we fully execute being this of all that? And so I was trying to figure out a way to <laughs> wrap it up in 12 weeks for somebody, which yeah. is sort of silly. And, and I don't know, I, it, I, it doesn't I, quite do what I want it to do. That's okay. Yeah, but everyone needs a starting point. Like I was just like last night, me and uh, one of my friends, we were having this debate, debate conversation, I guess, both. but uh, for like, probably went on for like two hours where like he was talking about the mind um, being able to influence like the body and everything. Um, And essentially he kind of was under the guise and I changed his opinion for the most part that you can influence almost everything in your reality through your mind. But he, he was under the opposite guise of like, no, it's not really changeable. But it came down to time as the main thing where it, he was like, if someone has cancer and it's stage four and they're going to die in a week, like they can't just think it away. And I was like, yeah, because you're putting things in a time. That's not saying that like you can't get cancer away through thought alone, 
you're putting it into the time as a constriction in a window. And so often you do have to put time in because if you take time out, people just don't even, like, this is a program for life. They're like, so how long does it take me to get results? And it's like, for life. And they're like, what you <laughs> you're like well, you're going to die next week. So, you know, you'll get results by then. Don't worry. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. It's a weird thing to have to navigate. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Time is an element in our everything. Have you ever spent any time in the timeless? Um, I try to, uh, in the sense of, well, okay, I need you to define that before I can say yes or no. Um, okay. So, um, do you have much experience with, with ayahuasca or DMT? Not ayahuasca or DMT, but psilocybin and LSD. Okay. So there is a, um, a step function increase in bizarreness from there you know so like okay um and i'm not saying this happens for everybody or anything but one of the defining characteristics for my experiences um in like like the 30 to 40 ceremony range with ayahuasca hell yeah um and one of the defining characteristics of my experience is it opens up into a extra dimensional space uh where there's a visceral feeling of time not being a thing mm-hmm. and it's and the first few times i was there it was absolutely terrifying and i was convinced that i was losing everything and i was like oh my god i'm stuck in a loop because that was the only thing that i could reference mm. in my own understanding of life because i was like oh it must be looping because that's that's what this feels like and it's like oh and the more times i went back to that space i was like no, it's not looping. There actually isn't time. Um, yeah, so that's a strange feeling. No, yeah. It, and it doesn't, it doesn't work with this, this consensual reality. That's, see, I want to explore that so much. I know in 2020, at the latest, I'm going to go to Peru and set all that up. Um, but it's, you know, I've heard like even, I forget uh, who Joe Rogan had on. They were talking about Selvia. Even on Salvia, the guy was like, I lived 15 years in this one, like, trip. And it's like that the, I don't know, maybe it's like a wave function holding in on itself, but it's like what we think of as now literally dissipating because the suspension of part, who knows? I don't know. I'm trying to explain in science and physics terms, but it gets very difficult. But, yeah, I want to definitely experience the oh, I lived 500 years on one during one trip and yeah. uh <laughs> so whatever happens happens yeah but, uh, so what would you say because earlier you were like shamanism that's a whole nother route I'd love to hear more about the shamanistic um you know mindset and things that you've done and how that's really for or you know help create your vision of what life is up to this point cool sure um so it started in high school um my dad my dad's first cousin is a man named myron ashowski and he all i really knew about him was that he was this cool dude who was sort of half deaf with amazing eyebrows and he lived in boulder colorado and every time he came to visit he always had some super cute young hippie chick with him and that was like (laughs) all i knew um but when I started, when I was in high school and I was like really kind of moving along on my own spiritual sort of path and was cognizant enough to start asking more adult questions, I was like, Myron, what is it? What do you do? And he was like, well, I'm a, I'm a shaman and I travel around doing workshops and I work for this organization called the Foundation of Shamanic Studies. And... Um, I talked, I basically, I use the drum to travel into the spirit world and I talk to plants and they tell me what I need to uh, help people heal whatever they've going on. And I was just like, well, that's fucking weird. Tell me more. <laughs> and, and so, um, so we got to talking a lot about it. And, and uh, at the time I had really serious acne and I had for like the last year or two and 
uh, dermatologists and all the creams and all the crap and nothing was working. And after this time when we started talking about everything, about two weeks after Myron left, I got a box in the mail and it was just like a box of, of like dried herbs, a little note. It was like, I did a journey on your behalf. This plant called out to me, make it into a tea, put it on your face and drink it once a day. And I was like, okay, no fucking joke, Austin. Two yeah. weeks later, my acne <laughs> gone gone to like never come back gone and i was like okay there is so much more than i ever thought going on going on um and so so that was really cool and so when i when i left ohio state and moved back to cleveland mm -hmm. one of my buddies who was a couple years younger he was still in high school and he was like hey man my mom goes to this native american drumming thing every once in a while sounds like it's like right up your alley she always wants me to come but i don't want to go but <laughs> would you go with me and i was like yeah sure and so i went and it's a beautiful amazing house and super cool couple that runs the whole thing and so they do all this drumming and then um it's shamanic journey work so using the drum are you familiar with the shamanic journey work at all uh, a little but no i need to like you're starting to open me up to my realization that I've not gone deep enough into the things that I think that I actually like. But yeah, you know, whatever we can turn off the recorder and keep going to all these other realms too. But, yeah. um, so Michael Harner was a anthropologist and went and studied in South America in the Amazon. Drake ayahuasca and was like, Whoa, this is back in the sixties. Yeah. Um, and wrote books on the topic and was like, that's too far but there's got to be some way to be able to still access these kind of realms without having to go through total mm. fucking banana zone. And so he started in consulting different tribes in different areas. He found that a lot of people use um, the drum as yeah. the canoe in order to, take, to carry the spirit from this world to the spirit world. And he created a whole map of, of this, of the lower, middle, and upper realms. And really, really cool. Absolutely fascinating stuff. Michael Harner, definitely get into his work. Yeah. Um, thousand percent going to. So, um, so, yeah. So, get to this house, and they're like, oh, we're going to do journeying. And I was like, cool, this is what my cousin Myron does. And they were like, wait, your cousin is Myron? Myron Ashowski, I was like, yeah. And they're like, can we touch you? Oh my God, you're related to Myron. And I'm like, yeah, what's the big deal? And it's like, oh, well, yeah, he always told us that he has family here in Cleveland. It's like, whenever he has really heavy work to do, he always stays here at this house. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. So, cause he always told us, he's like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm coming to Cleveland, let's have dinner, but I can't stay with you guys because I have heavy work to do. I was like, have you, I don't know what that means. Yeah. And so then oh, here I am just like randomly at the people's house where he was staying. So, um, got to really dive into working with them. So that became my community for the next four years, basically. And every other Wednesday for four years went there and we would do two journeys and like dive into the spirit realm and kind of share what our experience was and sometimes you'd have a journey for somebody across the room be like holy shit that was my experience and oh my, this is for you and spirit told me that this is actually for you greg and like it was it was wild it was like there was me i was I started going there when i was 18 and it was all like 55 60 year old people and um i was like the weird kid just ready to get my mind blind blown open without drugs because I kind of fried myself and having that introduction, like being able to stay away from psychedelics for yeah. a while in that recreational realm, going deep into spiritual work and traveling without psychedelics was like, allowed me to really revisit psychedelics in a more ceremonial context after that. Wow. So my mic's going to sound a little different now because I just realized something, but, um, man so with shamanic drumming how how does that function similar to something like ayahuasca or dmt trip or is it like using i are you familiar with like brain fm brain fm yeah no no it's okay if you're not you're gonna love it so brain.fm um okay. it's like five different sounds and whatever ai paired with nature sounds paired with 
<clears throat> binaural beats, that type of stuff. Um, they have it for like napping is awesome because 15 to 30 minutes, it'll bring you in and out without an alarm. Uh, super good for focus, blah, 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 whatever. Um, but it uses neural oscillation. So essentially like they're kind of like priming your mind for like, if you think about like a neural oscillation, it's like oscillation is like something spinning. Sure. So it can like tune your mind into like de- delta, beta, theta, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Utilizing that. So is the drumming doing something similar? Like how, what is the drumming doing? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's like, it's like old school binaural beats essentially. Um, and so it, it's a rapid pace consistently. And so it's very much going into a theta state. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, yeah, and a lot of it is, is imagery, like using your own mind's eye in order to propel yourself places. And some people that don't do as well with visualization will have entirely physical, visceral body really? experiences, um, auditory hallucinations sometimes. Um, so I always kind of rode the line of like, is this my imagination? Is this actually mm-hmm. my experience? Like, I don't know. But then after a while, it was like, all, everything is experience. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, it's all recorded in the Akashic record, right? Yep. Drop the needle, let it spin and keep going. So um, it has a very different kind of quality than, than the psychedelic, like a, a plant-based oh. psychedelic. Um, it's yeah. I've, you're way, way more conscious, way more in, in control and engaging with the environment. It's still, totally. see, but there still are entities that are, I could very, really, very really have an experience with entities that I knew weren't me, that were giving yeah. me advice that I couldn't possibly have anywhere from my own life experience mm-hmm. that had their own personalities that I could encounter over and over again for years and years and still go back to. So Man. Uh, totally different and yeah. just, it, also a really cool tool. That is awesome. Yeah. I, and I've never done anything like that. I I need to get this this sound therapy going. It's not so sound therapy is different. This is a shamanic drum ritual. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, that sounds so cool. I'm like, there's yeah. all these things. Pick up the way of the shaman by Michael Harner. It's a it's a really really good introduction. Okay. Perfect. It'll, it'll kind of give you the the details of how to do it. And now you can go. I think I think you can even look on Spotify and be like shamanic drumming. And oh really? I have like different shamanic drumming things where it's just a drum do, 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 oh cool for like 15 20 minutes or whatever yeah yeah i just i just joined this place literally yesterday i did the float tank for 60 minutes nice and we have like these badass saunas so i did like a 30 minute session of that right after and the sauna's got a uh a bluetooth hook in so i can like just play whatever i want while i'm in there yeah. i'm definitely gonna give that a go after because after the float tank in the, straight into the sauna I was already like feeling like a little like state change, whatever it was. I'm like, that'll be dope. Did you have any kind of visionary experiences in the tank? So I don't normally in the float tank, in the float. I have, I'm probably type uh, A personality. Uh, so I'm like always like zooming around. Yeah. Uh, I can shut off pretty easily. I don't know why, like I have a good like mix back and forth. Um, but in the tank, I do two things so like i did a joe dispensa meditation at the beginning like walk through my own uh kind of blessing all the energy centers Uh and then from there i try to spend i can't give you a i don't know where the time was but it's probably 10 to 30 minutes of just being in nothingness um and there i can change a lot about myself uh when i go into the state of nothingness then like i notice like post that I'm pretty malleable and what I'm thinking, how I'm uh, experiencing things. So I kind of like go on gratitude and all that after and try to uh, arrange who I am again. Yeah. 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 So when you come out of it, are you still in that kind of liminal realm? And yeah. Yeah. I'm like a luminous for a while where I'm like, okay, what do I want? And then in the sauna, I just kept the meditation going. Yeah. But I haven't done to the sauna before, right out or right after. It was pretty interesting. It's cool. I've always wanted to do a float tank. That's like one. You've never done I've one. Never done. No, dude. Um, I'm about to. They've got. There's one. There's a place right around the corner for me. Like I could. I can walk there in three minutes. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. 
they're i man i really like them if not for the absence of things like if if not for like oh i'm going to get deep work and whatever more for like literally just the absence of sound like you're you it's like you're floating on a cloud or yeah. like in a womb like yeah. that's the exact feeling like as soon as i got in i was like hell yeah i'm like back i don't know where <laughs> i am but i'm back and then from there it's like at the beginning your mind's like what do i want to think about and then you're like okay cool and then it's like maybe five maybe 20 minutes in you're like oh man what's going on? like how long is this gonna be like i don't know mm. the time or anything and then that's when you're like okay it's like normally when you're talking to someone on the phone, it takes like 30 minutes and they're warmed up. I feel like it's the same way for the brain. It's like, okay, I'm good now. Well, let's figure this out. Just mellow out. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Did I you ever see Altered States. No, what is that? It's, a, it's from it's a 1980 Hollywood film starring William Hurt. Check it out. So he's like an anthropologist and he starts playing around it's like kind of the story of john lilly like a little yeah. bit but he starts playing around with with float tanks and then he goes to mexico and has some crazy mushroom brew with in mexico and trips out and he's like i'm bringing this back and starts doing that in the float tank and then starts like waking up in the zoo eating a goat leg and like you know, he like yeah it gets crazy but yeah. um i was like whoa and that's what kind of turned me on to float tanks was seeing this movie and i was like am i gonna end up a simian yeah <laughs> like, am i just gonna like go back into my dna and become cosmic soup like what's gonna happen so it's i would definitely say doing a substance and then going would would uh elevate what you can do in there yeah because it takes no, you right. out of your body no. Rogan always talks about doing a little yeah. weed and jumping yeah. in his pod. Yeah, but he's like, that's kind of like his baseline. Like, yeah. likely, <laughs> likely he's doing a little weed than doing everything. Right. Like, like, yeah, it's, it's, point. it's but the best if you smoke a little and then you go in and you're like, wait, but you smoked a little and we're doing everything else throughout your day too. He's like, yeah, because that's also the best. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. No, but I, yeah, I definitely think so. I don't know. I'm weird with uh, marijuana as a substance. For the majority, um, I've only I'm mainly indica uh, is the route that I take. Um, but then I get anxious. I can get anxious pretty quickly, and I get weed hangovers. Yeah, like bad. Like yeah. the next day, I'm like, damn it. I I can't think for three days. I mean, yeah. I can think obviously, but words don't come together as I try to express them. Like I'll be yep. reaching for my vocabulary, and it's just not there. And I, don't know, I had to I had to pretty much stop smoking a few years ago. I still smoke a handful of times a year. Yeah, I, it's wonderful. If yeah, I like if I want to just like hang out and play my guitar, it's like there's nothing better. Totally. But um, yeah, just I don't know. I don't know how I did it. Like all through my twenties, I was an all day, every day smoker. Really? Yeah, for years. Like, I have no idea how I function. Like what? Yeah. I know. I don't, I don't know, but I did somehow because I guess you kind of get used to it. Your body yeah. gets used to it. It I has to. I just can't fuck with that anymore. No. I like all the microdose. I like to do that. Um, mm. I think the cognitive effects I get from it are pretty cool. And then yeah. if I need to be creative, I'm like, mm, well, this is easy. Um, and it's fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's all fun. It's all fun. Yeah. So that's kind of how life has to be. So, Prometheus Rising. I know uh, you were like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. How do you uh, jump on that train? I had a, a friend slash colleague who was like, Austin, you need to read this because you'll love it. Because we were talking about manifesting, and like, I was like, I always get parking spots, and then people always give me free coffee. And he's like, read this book because it's kind of like how to train that at the beginning. Yeah, and exercises. And I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I need to read it. Yeah. So what do you think? I love it. I think it's so cool. I like the exercises. He like gives you like, I think most of the books like are like, no, think this way. And you're like, okay. And he's like, no, do this research. If you don't do these exercises, this book won't work. Yeah. It's cool. I need to revisit it. I haven't read it in a very long time. Um, so yeah, very long time. So I got into Robert Anton Wilson when I was in graduate school. Mm. So that was 2003 to 2005. And um, yeah. And so what Prometheus Rising was just one of them I had to pick up, but I've read 
a lot of his work. Really? And so like his fiction is my favorite ever. Oh, really? The, the Illuminatus trilogy is amazing. It's it's the most fantastic metaphysical, quantum mechanical, philosophical, conspiracy theoretical masterpiece you could ever imagine. Like reading it will will cause synchronicities that you wouldn't understand possible in your own life, and it does it to everybody who reads it. It's so cool. Okay, um, can't recommend it enough. You know, it's a big fucking yeah thousand pager, but I'll listen you know. to it two or three times. I'm almost up to three times speed. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so it's an event. Yeah. So in the Schrodinger cat trilogy, it's great. So those kind of is more fictional things, but then the cosmic trigger trilogy is mm-hmm. another one of his things that was nonfiction gets more into his philosophy and he's a, a, a theoretical mathematician. I think that's what he actually oh, really? has a PhD in. So yeah, fascinating character like deep into the occult and like Gurdjieff and, and Aleister Crowley and all that kind of weird shit. And, um, Israel Regardi and the Golden Dawn, like he goes deep into all these realms too. Um, yeah. Quantum psychology. What's uh reality is what you can get away with. That's a really good one. So he's, he's got a lot of really, really, really cool shit. Oh, I have so many books that I have to read. <laughs> it's like my never ending struggle. Right. Oh, Amazon's right. algorithm's getting better and better too. So it's always like, you might like this. And I was like, yeah, I definitely would like that. It's right. Pressing add to cart. I have like my wish list is just ridiculous. Yeah. I, I've given up on the wish list. I've, now I put it all into the save for later. My save yeah. for later, like to scroll through is like <laughs> hundreds of items. I'm like, no, it's so daunting. It's, it gets bad. Yeah, I read the 49th uh, Mystic. And uh, have you read that yet? No, I haven't read that. That's one of Aubrey's favorites, Ted Decker. Um, okay. 49th Mystic. And then the sec- the it's a sequel, or uh, there's two books, is uh, The Rise of the Mystics. Phenomenal. And I have a feeling it's going to be similar to The Illuminatus. Is that how you say it? Yeah, The Illuminatus trilogy. Yeah. Um, just in the synchronicity aspect because I was like, holy shit, this is basically what I believe spiritual wise. Like almost to a T. It's like, motherfucker. someone yeah. else knows this shit. It's like, I'm the only one who figured this out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, no, I mean, so what I mean by synchronicity, like yeah. I, you'll start noticing weird synchronicities mm. happen in your life. You'd be like, and that's what, it's kind of what the book did to me. And it's like, wait, it's like a conversation that somebody, two random characters are happening in the book. Like all of a sudden you'll find yourself having with somebody else. Like, <laughs> wait a second. I just read this. Like, like really weird. Okay. Stuff. Yeah. Not necessarily. It's like, Oh, that's such a coincidence. I think that way too. Like, yeah. that's awesome. I'm not yeah. trying to take anything yeah, away yeah. from that. I'm just saying like, Robert yeah. Anton Wilson is a master of bizarre. Like how okay. he, played this magic out in all these different realms is fascinating hell yeah okay yeah i'm about to be exploring that so so I, Fortnite mystic i'll check that out too i'm yeah, curious about the ted decker thing but i've been turned off by the the jesus-y aspect of it yeah um, yes yeah you just gotta kind of like act out. like the word doesn't mean like josiah just act like it's you know something else like tom or whatever <laughs> fill, in, fill in the blank it's more of like an x it's a, it's a placeholder for x gotcha um so with everything that we talked about i have a term that i like to you know assimilate and kind of get the baseline of people with which is high leverage skills and that would be you know something that you can pick up and place on most things when you're learning or doing them What do you think that your high leverage skill is Could be like some examples are like, um, you know, using failure or uh, learning to learn because if you learn to learn, of course you can learn anything better. But uh, is there anything unique to you that you've been like, this is how I always like do these one things or learn or get better. Um, Could be a mindset or whatever, but is there anything that you think your higher, higher leverage skill would be? Yes. It's a great question, by the way. I really love that. Awesome. Um, uh, perspectival flexibility. Ooh. That would be it. Hell yeah. Um, and I feel like one of the greatest gifts of all my medicine journeys has been 
the showing of and allowing me to see multiple perspectives and like being able to be in a situation and detach myself from the situation and kind of go back and look at it and be like, okay, this is how I'm approaching it right now. What happens if I look at it from this angle? What happens if I look at it from this angle? What about this angle and this angle? And so um, my, my kind yeah. of tendril, tendrils in reality are a little bit loose and I've, I've become really flexible. And so it helps in any moment to be able to be like, this isn't working. What if I come at it from this angle? Okay, cool. Now things are flowing again. I love that. That's per- perspectile flexibility. Yeah. Of, yeah. That's a flexible perspective. It's yeah. Easier. No, I, li- I like the other way. The other <laughs> way is more unique. It's, man, that is so crucial. And that's literally, I would say, the lack of that is the reason for most of the hardships and bad things that are currently happening in almost all of society. Yeah. You're just like, no, you never, I would never look at anything that way. It's like, never, you know, you know what the word never means? Yeah. Right. Like, I, know, I struggled with that, that, that uh, always and never thing that Aubrey had us do. It's yeah. Like, it's never a long time, bro. <laughs> never it's is a really long time. <laughs> it's like I, I love the the call it the magical stuff. I was watching the show The Magicians. Yeah, um, I love. I got so wrapped up in that. I oh know. My God, yeah, yeah it was fun. <laughs> and they were like, "He's like, yeah, I have to work for the library forever." And they're like, then they start using a billionaire's and uh, what's your name? Uh, I can't even remember her name right now. She's like. Am I the only one who knows that forever is way more than a billion years? <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody's like, a billion years, a billion years. She's like, no, it's way more than a billion years. Like, yeah. <laughs> way more. So yeah. much more. It's yeah. like, have you read Finite and Infinite Games? Uh, just the Blink. I have a Blinkist. Okay. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm all about that shit. Yeah. So really? I'm- Okay, we're back. Okay. We're back. Awesome. Yeah. Blink is I've ne- I have not I've yet to try. I like was gonna do it and then I'm like, ah, but I like digest content like a mother. It's... But so in Finite and Infinite Games, one of the main one of the things that like stuck with me, because when I'm listening to things in two or three, a lot of times it's to see like what actually sticks out to me. Hmm. Um and he was like with an infinite game or like uh let's say getting like the ability to live forever he's like you can't live then and there's no like that's you're not living if you can live forever you're not living yeah because of the fact that now there's no game so there's no stakes so nothing matters it's right. like cheat codes right. and i was like fuck okay strike live forever off live a thousand years okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly and i'm in yeah that's that's, that's, that's what creates Scarcity creates beauty. Exactly. Scarcity so, mindset is one thing. But it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, like, the scarcity of life as a human, that's real. Oh yeah. yeah. But um so another thing that I, I always like to ask is right now, is there anything that you're currently questioning? And it could be, you know, as grandiose as politics and life or as little as like how doorknobs function. Uh but is there anything in general consensus that you know, everybody normally is like, yeah, that's how it works. And you're like, mm, I don't think it works that way. Hmm. Um, democracy. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely been questioning democracy a lot recently. Um, doesn't, I don't know if it's working. Yeah. I would agree. I don't know. If it's it's, uh, I think, I think as an ideal, it's probably really cool, but, uh, it breaks pretty easily. Like leave it yeah. to us Americans to create a two party system to break democracy. Yay. I know. I know. Uh, I, I'm I'm just hoping some random party comes in and wins. And everyone's cool. What the fuck? Where'd that come from? And then everyone's like, wait, we can have different beliefs. And then there's like a hundred parties spawn out of just that one thing happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's not good right now. Yeah. It's it's sad. It's a uh, Robin Anton Wilson has a term, the reality tunnels. And 
and it's like everybody's just kind of digging their own reality tunnel and looking in here and so oh. it's like I just got to find some way to just drill into the sides of these reality tunnels that everyone has dug for themselves so they Seriously. can start seeing that there's just there's other ways to look yeah there's cool shit out there you don't so have to much believe. cool shit if you align with one belief like pick a or b you're like fuck a has a lot of shit in it b has a lot of shit in it it's like i don't know if i really want to pick either of them i'm very i hate politics i hate what's going on yeah it's like where all my darkness goes is against the darkness no fuck that darkness batman it's it's been a huge thing for me recently is like really using um uh, buddhist practices Mm -hmm. and and sending as much love as i can to all the people that rub me the wrong way like yeah donald trump gets so much more attention and so much more of my love than most people in my life and really that's awesome he i mean he needs it most yeah no i yeah 100 percent. it's like people in the ghetto people are like no don't go there it's bad but it's like you doing that is making it worse making it worse yeah or like, oh, I hate when people are like, um, they're like, yeah, because they need to be helped. And I'm like, mm, you just took away all their ability to help themselves for the most part. Right. right. You got to gotta give them some autonomy. Give people, everyone can change. Everyone can do anything they want to do. It's just, if you don't like give them in love, not in like, here, here's fish. Here's fish every day. Right. Yeah. Tools. I, Give yeah. people tools and like I mean, that's been it's been upsetting to me. I've been reading about philanthropy and different mm-hmm. organizations. Like, like the Gates organization is incredible. Like they're yeah. curing malaria. Fucking wow. Um, but there's so many different places that I feel like could really be yeah a leverage point. And education is the baseline of all leverage. You know, like if you can educate people, then they can actually make informed decisions for themselves and learn ways to get out of or into whatever yeah. it is that you do. And across the board, the worst place to ever give your money is to educational purposes. Like they fail over and over and over and over and over again. Like why yeah. is that? That's, I guess that's something I'm really questioning. It's like, why have our attempts at education failed consistently? I think it's, man, it's the A or B thing. It's like our education system is set up for only one type of person or another type of person. Yeah. And they're like, these oh, well, people will learn a certain way. It's like, no, everyone learns differently. And yeah, I mean, one of my biggest passions is trying to change how people learn because I've, I've, I've always learned what I wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. well and i was great at school i have like a half photographic memory i don't know i call it a half photographic but i can like read most things and know exactly what i said or what someone said if i listen to them that's convenient yeah exactly yeah good one. so school is easy because i could just go through and be like yeah okay the teacher said all these things but that's not learning and the things that i really wanted to learn i learned because i would create an environment of like Okay, so in math, this happened, in history, this happened, and, and create that map so that I could locate information together and store it probably in a better way. So that's how I try to do things where it's like relate information. Yeah. I think that's the way. I think if people can, either, either that's physically doing something, while also learning about it in a book, like that's fine, or reading a few different books or whatever it is, where you're going more than just, this is how you do this math equation, but it's like, here's why this math equation is important. Then it's like, okay, cool. There's yeah. actually a reason I should learn this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I wish people took like brought more props. Like school needs more props. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how things it work. Does. Show yeah. and tell is the shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, people put the book them. down. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's look at how this thing is happening. Exactly. Yeah. There's, I'm a bookworm, but I'm, I am simply because I try to use everything that I learn almost right away. And if mm-hmm. it doesn't work, I'm like, yeah, okay. Maybe that wasn't for me. Yeah. 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 That was why I like, I got into Blinkist was because after reading so many books and like most of the books that have anything to do with personal growth, yeah, they are like 80% filler really. 
there are 200 page books because that's what the publisher needs, but they could have easily said everything in about 20 pages. Okay. And so Blinkist really does a good job of distilling that book's ah. message. And so, and you can read it in like 10 to 15 minutes and you're like, okay, I totally get what that is, is about. Yeah. And so okay. that's why I find it really helpful. So that's interesting. So, okay. I might get it to section literal, like to just use it for sections of books or like, like, uh, not sections, areas of study. Yeah. Like some things I love long form and I'm like, fucking get in the details. How are buttons? Who's the guy who created buttons? Just like, yeah. <laughs> I like to learn about anything. Cause it's just like one day I know I'm going to be at a bar or I'm going to be somewhere and someone's going to bring something out and I'll be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. We could have this conversation. Cause I read that one thing all the long time ago. Yeah, exactly. But, and it does that like sometimes like finite infinite games after I read that blink I was like, okay, this one obviously has more to it. And I mm -hmm. put it into my fucking Amazon shopping cart. Yeah. So it, it does that too. You can tell when it's like, that's all the information there is. And you can also tell when it's like, Whoa, this probably goes way deeper than I'm actually getting from these. Yeah. That's like the, so that's, there was like that book, the one thing, and then there was essentialism and I was like, cool. I understand them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What's it essential? Doesn't, doesn't the one much. thing <laughs> okay uh -huh. yeah no but oh man you brought up bill gates and philanthropy do you you see uh that he's trying to block the sun he's trying to block the sun yeah him and mit i think there's 20 million dollars invested and they're going to launch sulfur particles above uh i forget what area of the united states to see if they can actually repel sunlight with uh air basically air pollution so that it doesn't affect uh, the global warming. I'm very against that. I'm like, this is not going to be good. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, uh, that does, these are always those things where, so there's an old Taoist story, right? Where um, an old man is, is on his property and his neighbor comes over and, and he's just like, oh, I see that, that your son is, uh, is a beautiful young man. Congratulations on having uh, this beautiful young man as your son. And he was like, yeah, we'll see. It's yeah. great. We'll see. And then he, uh, his son goes out and he's riding a horse and he falls off the horse and he breaks his leg and he's like an invalid for months. His mm -hmm. neighbor comes over and he's just like, oh, such bad fortune. Your son broke his leg. He's such a wonderful young man. And he's like, yeah. We'll see. And then, the then the next week, the military generals come through and they're recruiting all the young men to take into the army, but he's got a lame leg and so they won't take him. And the neighbor comes back. How fortunate. Your son was injured so he didn't have to go into the army and fight in the war. And he's just like, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> and, and so it's kind of this, this way yeah. of like expanding your perspective. And it's like, oh, what's good now might turn out to be horrible later. What's horrible yeah. now might actually turn out to be a blessing later. It's like, we don't really know. Yeah, that's true. I guess we so, just have to shoot. Here's, the here's another example, right? So we're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction that this planet has ever seen, according mm -hmm. to our geological records. This is what we understand. And so species are dying off 100 yeah. to 150 every day. Like it's, it's a mass extinction. It's happening. And it's the sixth one. The very first one, was about four and a half billion years ago when a brand new element was introduced into the atmosphere and it killed off 99% of all life that was on the planet. And what was that new element? Nitrogen. Oxygen. Oxygen. The very thing that is necessary for life to exist as we know it. So you never know what might be catastrophic and horrible can turn into oh. great beauty. Over, you know, yeah. a billion years is a billion years. <laughs> you know, it's not that long, really. <laughs> yeah damn no totally yeah i just have these sometimes i'm like just uh, we humans like to trifle in things that i'm like dude you shouldn't get to decide for us what's best yeah like for everyone that's but billionaires that's the field they play in no i just yeah. i'll take that country that one's mine what yeah yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, it's cool it's just a country it's not that big of a deal it's not like it's a continent yeah like, uh, Hopefully but, enough of them get tired of the toys and realize how vapid that life is. And so there seems to be a, a tend towards that direction. Yeah. Yeah. In the, from what I understand, and I'm not playing in those realms, but um, Tucker Max, I don't know yeah. if you read his MDMA experience. 
Mm, no, I have not. He shared it on Medium. It's really, it's a really good read. Yeah. Um, but what he was saying towards the end of it, he was like, I kind of get to play in circles that are above my pay grade, which is really awesome. So I hang out with billionaires on a regular basis. And where I'm still trying to grow my business and I want to talk to these guys about business, all they want to talk about now is consciousness <laughs> and psychedelics. Yeah. And it's like, it's what's happening in those worlds. And so yeah. that's very encouraging for me. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so maybe these people with all these, this money that actually have a resource to enact great change yeah start to have a different understanding of what reality is and actually use those resources to enact that change Dude, that's i'm a hopeful optimist so me too obviously yeah, yeah. i mean that's the way you go so last thing are you currently obsessed with anything right now uh, um uh yeah, <laughs> I actually, I'm obsessed with hit workouts. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. So I'm like, I don't know, just pushing myself and like just seeing how exhausting four minutes can be, and then <laughs> how rejuvenating two minutes between the next four minute thing can be, and so really playing with those rest periods and like it's like okay, cool. I don't know. Yeah. I've I've been doing yeah. fitness my whole life, and so but like last month i've been really big into hit workouts it's like this is cool it's noticing gains yeah. noticing just noticing change that i've never seen before in 30 years of fitness yeah. training man yeah i love that i love variating all types of exercise diet i mean exercise things diet exercise yeah just like whatever your paradigm is flip it on its head and you know every once in a while and see if uh See how that treats you. Yeah. That's fun. It can be a lot of fun. It is super fun. Hell yeah. So where can people find you before we sign off? What's um, your address? No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> find me in Austin. Just roam the streets. You'll yeah. see me. Um, uh, MatthewMyro.com. M-Y-R-O. That's a good place. That's where you'll find all my coaching stuff. Um, awesome. get, get in contact with me. Um, I'm at Matthew Myro everywhere. So Hell yeah. there's no other Matthew Myros in the world, which is really convenient. Um, so yeah, you can awesome. dig into all the stuff. Well, hell yeah. Yeah. Anyone who's looking for consciousness and everything in between health, fitness, diet, lifestyle, check them out. So thank you so much for coming on. This was awesome, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate you so much. This was a really, really fun ride. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, we'll chat soon again. Yeah, good. I hope so.